Welcome back to another video. Today we are doing something a little bit different because I am joined by Alex from Zeiss. Alex, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely no problem. And today we're going to be looking at two new products from Zeiss and they're super interesting because these are trail cameras, which is something new for Zeiss, right? Yes, very new for us. And it's pretty new for me as well. I've never actually had hands-on experience with a trail camera before, but it's something that's really interesting. I think a lot of wildlife photographers, if you've not used one, they're a very interesting tool. And everyone who has used one seems to be able to get really interesting results as well. So Alex, before we get into the actual products, do you want to tell us a little bit about what you might use a trail camera for? Yeah, so trail camera is, as you said, a fantastic device uh, really for seeing what's out there in the wild when you're not around. You, you, they take images via the infrared signal at night as well as with, yeah, in the daytime. Um, so yeah, a great device to see just what's out in your garden, whether you've got hedgehogs or sort of the neighbor's cat coming into the garden, uh, but also for sort of, yeah, wildlife photographers really trying to sort of, yeah, capture things in other wilder like locations, you know, the, you can use them to really sort of, um, yeah, observe what's going to be roaming at certain times uh, during the day uh, and then go out there on, on an adventure really to go and capture pictures of them knowing that uh, the, that wildlife is passing through that area. Awesome. And so we've got two products here. So it's obviously known for great cameras, great lenses, lovely kind of optics like that. Do you want to tell us how this has come about? Yeah, so it's a fantastic opportunity. We've purchased this company called Ventrade, who have been producing these Seeker Cam trail cameras uh, for a number of years now. And so they're tried and tested, you know, proven devices. And yes, as you say, with our photography lens know-how, we can come in and really sort of, yeah, assist with the picture interpretation and optimization. And also with our, our technology base, uh, we can look at the software architecture behind that and, and also the AI technology that's in these devices. Yeah, that's interesting, actually. We'll come back to that in a bit. But do you want to take us through the two different products here, what the differences are? Of what they're actually doing. Yep, so we're launching to start off with uh, two products, the Seeker Cam 5 and Seeker Cam 7, keeping that Seeker Cam name because it means a, a, a great deal in Europe. Uh, they have great market share over there, so yeah, but fully branded as Zeiss products. And uh, yeah, you've got two, the two different models. So uh, both models come with a five megapixel uh, sensor and they take uh, up to 12 megapixel interpolated images. So those interpolated images uh, are great when you're putting them onto big, bigger screens. So you get sort of, yeah, a bit better definition when looking through them. Um, but yeah, each of the models is uh, tested in Germany. Uh, so every unit um, comes loaded with an SD card and batteries and they do a test photo to make sure that yeah, they are sending signal. Um, but yeah, they have both have a lovely 2.4 inch LCD screen on them. Um, the five is slightly smaller than the seven uh, and has the camera sort of yeah on the door itself. Whereas the Seekcam seven, is really handy because it has the forward facing camera. So as you're mounting that onto a tree, you can see the full field of view, what it's seeing. So you make sure that there's no tree branch, you know, waving in front of it that might set off the motion detector and use up to a lot of your photos. Um, you've also got a, an ejectable battery tray on the seven as well. So it makes it really easy to change those batteries over when you do need to um, by having those, you can, you can buy those separately and have them locked and loaded when you're going out into the wild, slot that in and then you're ready to go. How long roughly do you think a battery life would last on something like that? Yeah, so it depends on how much you're using it, whether you have it in sort of modes like continuous photo mode um, uh, and how many photos it is actually taking. But generally, if you're looking at sort of, yeah, 150 to 300 photos a month, which is kind of like the average uh, for these sort of devices, you're looking at three to four months based on the alkaline batteries that these wow. come with, the, the Vata ones. Um, the You can use rechargeable batteries within them, so like 1.6 volt uh, Mignon batteries. Uh, and we will also have a solar panel available to that coming early next year. Um, so you can attach that to the top of the device and it will run off the solar panel, which, which holds the charge you know, from, from the sun. And then it will tap into the batteries when it needs to eventually, if it needs to, if we get enough sun, yeah. Awesome, okay, that's actually super useful to have that available as well. Um, so you don't have to necessarily worry so much about the batteries, which is good, although three to four months, really not, Really not too bad. So do you want to talk us through, for anyone who is already familiar with trail cameras and interested in them, maybe used them in the past, how these are different from your kind of standard trail cameras? Yeah, so as I pointed out, the the screen is one of the sort of, yeah, the main benefits on, on it. So yeah, when you are actually sort of, yeah, handling the device, you can view all of those pictures. You simply tap on the play button and you can view for all of your pictures there and you can 
go onto the menu and you can change all of those features uh, around it. So it's got lots of things that you can play with, including the sensitivity, how many pictures it might take in the series, the, and which of those series of photos you want to be sent to your device um, by the cellular signal. And you've also, you can change to full HD videos and loads of other things as well. So yeah, lots of things to play around with to get suited to what you're trying to do with it. Um, and yes, I touched on it there. The, the main thing is the, you might have given away with the antenna on the, the device, but uh, yeah, they are fully cellular signals, uh, uh, trail cameras. So they tap into all uh, European networks um, so mobile data roaming and this means that you know even in the most remote locations and even if you are in a different country in Europe you'll still get those images sent directly to your phone via the app where you can view if something's past your trail camera. So speaking of the cellular activity here there's a, a subscription service that you can use with these right do you want to talk us through that? Yeah so they're just like mobile phones effectively you can either do pay monthly or you can do Top, uh, pay as you go top ups um, so they work straight out of the box with the 32 gigabyte SD card included um, but you can also access the full capability of the device using sort of yeah buying pay as you go top ups 100 200 whatever photos uh, as little uh, pay as you go top ups or you can pay monthly and with each of the monthly subscriptions you get more photos and more videos as you go up through the range um, the main benefit really as well of paying monthly is that you get the remote control access. So you can change all of those features via the app, like the sensitivity, like the time is involved um, at the comfort of your own home. And it will just communicate out to the trail camera in the wild. Another really cool thing as well when you're on the subscription is that you can then share the camera with uh, people. So there's no cap on that. So you can share it with all your friends. You can have this in sort of yeah, a local wildlife location and each one of you gets that same update and you're only having to pay that monthly subscription once. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's a really nice feature. That makes it actually, yeah, that's super cool, especially with a group of people who are interested in that sort of stuff. That's fantastic. Now, you mentioned AI technology a little bit earlier on. Do you want to talk us through how that's integrated into these? Because that's pretty, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it's a really cool feature. Um, so on the premium level and the professional level of the subscriptions, you get uh, the first level of the AI technology working where if you want to see certain pictures of birds or deer or other wildlife you can type in I want to see deer pictures deer pictures and it'll bring up all of those in your gallery so you don't have to sort of scroll through just to find the pictures and the animals that you want to be looking for um, you can also uh, get this feature called color the night on the professional level so when the camera takes pictures during the daytime, it knows then for nighttime pictures, what color the, the trees are, the leaves are around it and what color the animal should be. Um, and so it will give you a full color picture at night. So again, instead of having to look through different gray and white, black and white pictures, um, trying to see where the animal might be around the trees, you it will stand out because it's in full color. That's awesome, that's really clever. And that's a really, really nice feature to have as well. Um, and especially since AI is so, you know, such a big thing now, that's a really nice thing to have integrated into the cameras. Awesome. So thank you so much for talking us through those. You can check out the full spec, the pricing, everything you might want to know by heading over to parkcameras.com. We'll pop links in the description of this video. So it's nice, easy to go and check these out. Otherwise, thanks very much, Alex, for talking to us. Thanks, Gareth. And we'll see you again soon.